This is a great question which combines two uh, wonderful hobbies, cricket and diophantine equations. Um, so we're given this puzzle. Um, in a recent T20 cricket match, T20 means there was 20 overs, the scoreboard malfunctioned during Shubman Kohli's innings. Each single he scored, the scoreboard incorrectly added four runs. For each four he hit, it incorrectly added six runs. And for each six he hit, it incorrectly added only one run and he only hit singles, fours, and sixes. Additionally, the scoreboard incorrectly added eight extras, it's not clear what the extras were, could have been leg buys, to his score. Once his innings was completed, the umpires noticed the mistake and calculated his correct score, which was exactly three times the incorrect score shown on the scoreboard. How many runs did he actually score, given that he hit a maximum of one six per over, i.e. a maximum of 20 sixes, because there were 20 overs? Okay, so this is going to be a Diophantine equation uh, in three variables. Um, we know it's going to be Diophantine because um, Shubman Coley can't score half a run or half a four or a quarter of a six. Um, so we know that the number of singles, fours and sixes that he scored is going to be an integer. And we also know that it is actually going to be a positive integer of singles, fours and sixes because this, the, uh, the question tells us. First of all, let's get the equation out. So um, let's let uh, x be the number of singles, uh, y be the number of fours and z be the number of sixes. So his incorrect score, let's have a look at his incorrect score first. Well, when he hit a single, for each single it added four. So his incorrect score was 4x add. For each four, they give him six runs and for each six they only gave him one run uh, and they gave him eight extras that was his incorrect score and we know that the correct score would be for each single he gets one for each four he gets six uh, sorry four and for each six he gets six and we know that the correct score x add four y adds six z equals three times the incorrect score which is 4x add 6y, add z, add 8. OK, so let's expand this out. So that's x add 4y, add 6z, equals 12x add 18y, add 3z, add 24. And let's move everything to one side. So we get 11x add 14y minus 3z equals minus 24. And that is our... Linear Diophantine equation in three variables, x, y, and z. Now, there are an infinite number of solutions to this. Let's, let's be clear. There are an infinite number of integer solutions. But hopefully, uh, presumably how the question was designed, there is only one set of integer solutions which satisfy all of these constraints. But the first thing we have to do is we have to get the general solution for x, y, and z of this three-variable Diophantine equation. And uh, for anybody who hasn't watched the, the, uh, the video that I did the other day, which uh, explains how to solve three-variable Diophantine equations, please uh, feel free to go and watch that. The link is in the description to this YouTube video. OK, so what we're going to do um, is we are going to let W equal 11x add 14y. Uh, and that means that we can rewrite our Diophantine equation as W minus 3z equals minus 24. Um, now, by inspection, we don't, we don't need to go through all the rigmarole here. We just need to find a particular solution for W and Z. Now, by inspection, we can see that if we put W equals 3 and Z equals 9, well, 3, take away 3 times 9 is minus 24. That is a particular solution. So, therefore, our general solution is W equals 3 minus 3S we get the minus 3 from there, and z equals 9 minus s, and we get the 1 from there, um, where s is contained in the integers. Now, if that doesn't mean anything, again, please go and watch the video, uh, which is linked to in the, um, in the description to this video. Okay, so we have these two. Now we need to solve for w, which we've already said is 11x add 4y. So we have 11x add 14y equals... 3 minus 3s. Well, first of all, let's solve 11x add 14y equals 1. And let's do it the formal way. Let's do it with the GCD. So let's go over here. So the GCD of 11 and 14, even though we know it's 1, let's go through the, uh, the formal process because that's going to help us to, um, to produce the, um, the general and particular solutions. So we know that 14 equals 
uh, 11 times 1, add 3, and then move the 11 here. 11 equals move the 3 here. 3 times 3, add 2. And 3 equals 2 times 1, add 1, which confirms what we already knew, that the GCD of 11 and 14 is 1. But now let's rearrange this equation here as 1 equals 3 minus 2 times 1 and replace the 2 with 11 minus 3 times 3, i.e. 1 equals 3 minus 11 minus 3 times 3, i.e. we have 1 equals, uh, so that's uh, 4 times 3 minus 11 times 1. And then let's replace the 3 in here with 14 minus 11 times 11. 1 equals 4 times 14 minus 11 times 1 minus 11 times 1 i.e. we get that um, 14 times 4 minus 11 times 5 equals 1. And we need to compare that to this equation here, which is the one we're actually trying to solve. Okay, so let's just rewrite this equation as 11 times minus 5 add 14 times 4 equals 1. And comparing this equation here to this one, we actually need to solve not to equals 1, but equals 3 minus 3s. Three so let's multiply everything by 3 minus 3s, three and that gives us 11 times minus 5, 3 minus 3s. Three Add 4 times 4, 3 minus 3s three equals 3 minus 3s, three and therefore we can now read off that a particular solution is x equals minus 15. Add 15s and y equals 12 minus 12s. And so therefore, a general solution will be x equals minus 15, add 15s, add uh, 40, sorry, there's one there, add 14t from there, and y will be 12 minus 12s minus 11t from there for some s and t contained in the integers. Okay, so, and let's just bring uh, what we already know about z, z equals 9 minus s. Let's bring that down. So we now have the three general solutions to our uh, linear Diophantine equation, uh, which we had all the way up here. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, obviously there's a lot of constraints. So the first thing is, is we know that the number of singles, i.e. x, is greater than or equal to 1. So we know that minus 15 add 15s add 14t is greater than or equal to 1. We also know that the number 4s was greater than or equal to 1. So 12 minus 12s minus 11t is greater than or equal to 1. And we also know the number of 6s is between 1 and 20 because there was a maximum of 1 6 per over and there was at least 1. So we know that um, 1 is greater, 9 minus s is greater than or equal to 1, which is less than or equal to 20, i.e. we can solve this one straight away, is that uh, s must be greater than or equal to minus 11 and less than or equal to 8. So we'll use that in a minute. Uh, looking at these two, how do we solve inequalities with two variables? Well, the best way to solve them actually is, is algebraically. So let's just rearrange these two equations here, one and two, and I'll tell you what, let's do them in different colors because this might get slightly confusing if we don't. So let's do the first equation in red. So we have minus 15 add 15 s add 14 t is greater than or equal to one. If we uh, rearrange that, we get that t must be greater than or equal to 16 minus 15 s all over 14. And I'm gonna rewrite that as 16 over 14 minus 15s over 14. Let's do another colour now for the other one, this one here, number 2. Uh, and that will give us that uh, that's 12 minus 12s minus 11t is greater than or equal to 1. Let's rewrite that as t is less than or equal to 11, uh, where are we, 11 minus 12s over 11. And I'm going to rewrite that one as 11 over 11 minus 12s over 11. So we have these two lines, and let's draw them uh, on a graph. Okay, so let's um, let's have a look at a graph here. Uh, if we've got a little bit of space here, so um, oh, we can't do that. Okay, well let's put it on the second line then here. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, now if we look at 
this first one, the one in red. And let's just have a look here. So it goes through the point 16 over 14 on the T axis, and this one goes through the point 1. The gradient of the red one is very, very slightly less than the gradient of the blue one. So let's draw the red one. It goes through the point 16 over 14, 16 over 14 here, uh, and it's uh, got a gradient of minus 15 over 14. So the red one, which I'm going to draw now, basically looks like that. That's the red line. And the blue one is slightly steeper. And I'm going to uh, exaggerate this. Oh, sorry about that. There's the blue one, slightly steeper. Um, now, basically, if we look at this, T must be greater than or equal to the red. So, basically, it must be greater than or equal to there. But it also must be less than or equal to the blue. And if we have the blue, it must be less than or equal to that. Well, the only place that it's greater than or equal to the red and less than or equal to the blue is up here, where the blue line is greater than the red line. So we need to see where the two lines cross, and that will give us a value of s equals minus something. And we can ignore any values of s greater than that because they don't satisfy these two inequalities. OK, so what we first need to do then is we now need to solve and see where these two actually cross. So we have, let's have a look, we've got, uh, let's move down here, 16 minus 15s over 14. Let's see when it equals 11 minus 12 s over 11. So all I'm doing is I'm finding the point where they where they intersect uh, and that gives us uh, 176 minus 165 s equals 154 minus 168 s i.e. Uh, 3 s is minus 22 so s is minus 22 over 3. So this point here is minus 22 over 3 which means that for any value of s greater than minus 22 over 3, we can ignore because we know it doesn't satisfy these two constraints here. So all we need is s less than minus 22 over 3, and remembering that it's an integer, and also remembering that s must be greater than or equal to minus 11, we now know that s can only take the values minus 8, minus 9, minus 10, and minus 11. They are the only four values that it can take subject to these constraints. So let's just draw a little uh, table here. And let's see. So let's put uh, S here, minus 8, minus 9, minus 10, and minus 11. And let's put uh, here, let's, uh, sorry about this, it's uh, not the world's greatest table. Uh, and let's have a look here at 16 over 14 minus 15 S over 14. And let's put here 11 minus 12, 11 over 11 minus 12, S over 11. Okay, these are the two. Uh, so this one here is T min. That's the minimum value that T can take. And here is T max. That's the maximum value that T can take. Remember, we are now in this realm here. Um, so when S equals minus 8, um, this value here is 136 over 14. And when it's minus 9, it's 151 over 14. And when it's minus 10, it's 166 over 14. And when it's minus 11, it's 18, sorry, plus 166. And when it's ele minus 11, it's 180 over 14. All I'm doing is putting the values of S into this. Uh, and when, and putting the values of S into this one, we get 107 over 11, 119 over 11, 131 over 11. And 143 over 11. And let's just put these in their decimal forms. That's approximately 9.714. That's approximately 10.785. That's approximately 11.857. And this one is approximately 12.857. And on this side, it's approximately 9.727. That's approximately 10.818. That's approximately 11.909. 11 and this one equals 13. Now, if we actually just look, uh, let's choose a colour here, blue. If we look, we're saying that T minimum is 9.714 if S is minus 8, and T maximum is 9.727. Well, between 9.714 and 9.727, which are the only allowed values of T, 
if s is minus 8, there is no integer. So therefore, that cannot be a solution. For s equals minus 9, t must be between 10.785 and 10.818. There is no integer value there, so that can't be a solution. Again, for minus 10, the only value of s for which there is a value of t which is an integer and which also satisfies these two constraints here is s equals minus 11 and t equals 13. And so therefore we have our solution. So our solution is s equals minus 11 and t equals 13. So going all the way back, let's just uh, have a rem remind ourselves what the... Uh, so the value of x was minus 15 add 15s add 14t. So the number of singles, number of singles, x, was equal to uh, minus 15 add 15s add 14t. The number of fours, which was y, was, uh, sorry, I've forgotten now, uh, 12 minus 12s minus 11t. These were the general uh, solutions, remember. And the number of sixes, which was z, uh, gives us 9 minus s. So we can put these values in. These are the only values for s and t which satisfy this equation and all the constraints. So sticking that into x means that the singles were minus 15, minus 15, minus 165, uh, add, uh, sorry, minus 165, oh, sorry, that's minus 180, add 182 which is 2, so the number of singles scored is 2. Y, putting in S and T, we get 144 minus 143, so the number of 4s he scored was 1, and then putting S equals minus 11 into Z, 9 minus minus 11 is 20, which gives us 20, um, so he scored 20 sixes. So we now know the uh, solution to this equation is that Shubman Gill, uh, Shub sorry, Shubman Coley, <laughs> Shubman Coley, not Shubman Gill, Shubman Coley, he scored two singles, one four, and 20 sixes. And let's just cross-check um, that this is correct. His correct score then, two singles would be uh, two times one, one four, and 20 sixes is uh, 120 and four, 124 is 126. And his incorrect score would have been, well, the two sixes would have, two singles would have given him two times four. The one four would have given him four times six. And the 20 sixes would have given him 20 times one. Add his eight extras, gives you two times four, eight, uh, 32. Um, that gives us uh, 42. And 42 is indeed one third of 26. Sorry, that's one there. One times six. And that 42 is indeed a third of 26 so it, it is correct and we now know that Shubman Coley scored 126 runs okay well I hope you enjoyed this um, and um, if anybody would like to uh, see more of these please subscribe to the Gressy Academy